White Bear Lake, Minnesota. A town with a Northwoods name. It has the look of a resort community. But White Bear Lake is part of the suburban landscape of the Twin Cities. One of its biggest businesses is car sales. The Highway 61 Auto Row draws customers from all over the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. That Lincoln coming up the road is being driven by Al Crane, a young man who grew up across town. Now White Bear's Auto Row is his natural habitat. Al's 27 years old. He sold cars along the row for most of the past nine years, and he's sold a lot of them. For the past six years, he's qualified as one of Lincoln Mercury Mercure's retail elite, a salesman of the nation. You know, some people, I guess, are given a God-given talent in their life. One thing maybe that they can do, and I guess mine is automobile sales. I'm, I, I just, I'm a, I'm a natural at it, I guess. Long before it became Randy Lee's White Bear Lincoln Mercury Mercure, Al spent time around the dealership during his early teens. When I hired Al, about the only thing I knew about him at that time, he, uh, he worked here as a lock boy when he was a teenager for his father. Uh, his father was the general manager of the dealership before it changed hands. Uh, no, and when I hired him, I had no idea that he would achieve the levels that he's uh, achieved in sales. Al has contributed significantly to make uh, the store a regional sales leader. His achievements have been absolutely remarkable. Uh, in the time he's been here, there's only been one time since uh, he's been here that he's failed to meet top sales of the month honors. The symbols of that success panel his office. His monthly career sales average is about 40 units retail. That puts his yearly income well into the six figures. In September 1985, Al hit his career high for a single month. He sold an incredible 82 cars retail. I don't feel that there's really any secret to my success. I think the most important thing is that you treat every customer fairly and work for that customer. One of the most important things that you have to do when you're selling is obligating that customer to you so that he'll buy from you. When I tell you that you have to obligate that customer, you have to do certain things. When I obligate a customer, I spend time with that customer. I explain product knowledge to him. I want him to use my time because he's going to feel obligated. Customer might walk in and say, yeah, I'd like to drive it, but I don't have time. I'll come back. When it's 20 below zero, wants to drive a car, I'm going to walk into the back lot and I'm going to bring a car up here. And I might walk in, my cheeks are just rosy red, and I want that customer to see that because he's going to feel obligated. Those are the things that you're going to have to do. And let me tell you this, that when you do those things and you freeze your butt off, the reward is at the end by selling that guy a car because he was obligated to you. You don't prejudge anybody. So the most important thing you can do right away, and that's a crucial five minutes right there, is greet this customer and get on the right side of him right away. I'm looking for a life. Full-size car. Full-size car? Yes. Let me show you our grand marquee right over okay. here. Okay. This is our full-size Mercury right here. It's got room for six, good-sized trunk, and a lot of nice features on the car. What are you driving right now, Luke? I'm driving an Audi. Driving an Audi. Okay, is that a five-speed? And sometimes I feel like I got a sixth cent. That means that I can kind of, uh, I can kind of judge and imagine how somebody's going to be. If I'm going to sell them today, how much money I'm going to be able to make, where to start the deal, I can kind of sense those things, and that's what kind of sets me aside, I think, from other salesmen because I'm thinking, I'm thinking ahead always. Randy Lee believes Al's desire to be the best is the key to his success. Hal Crane's really grown a lot in the last four years. He's a self-starter. He has taught himself how to sell cars. you got to say that he just eats, sleeps, and breathes this car business, and he does a very great job at it. The only man ever to challenge Al's sales supremacy is now his sales manager, Jack Davis. Jack's first auto sales job was here. He says he learned a lot by listening to Al. Uh, the other salesmen really look up to him. They listen to him. Uh, I think he's a, he's a good teacher just by um, watching, uh, watching and observing what he does and how he uh, takes care of his people. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. As a matter of fact, when I got into the business, I used to 
kind of cheat a little bit and have my ear to his office and listen to um, what he had to say and, and how he uh, handled objections. And he's very sincere in, in, in what he does and he's uh, conscientious and he's a very, very hard worker and uh, he'll do whatever it takes to, um, to sell the product. And he sold in the product himself. Fuel filler door release. Now that's a nice feature because somebody can't tamper with your gas there. The natural ability, the product knowledge, the understanding of features, benefits, and the customers he's talking to. Al Crane plays them like a concert master. And I made up my mind that I'm going to do the things, I'm going to do the little extra things to be the best. Randy Lee thinks I'm nuts, but I, I, uh, I drive to the different dealers, and I, I know their inventory. You obviously don't have a blue one. Okay, yeah, let's see. We've got the red, black, white. I know their inventory stuff. When somebody comes in here, and if I don't have the car, I know I can get it. If you want to be successful in that, there's little things you have to do. You want to be a good football player, you got to lift extra weights. you got to work after practice. You know what? Well, if you want to be successful in the car business, it's not just working at the dealership. you got to work after, too. Al's success in the car business came after giving up on athletic greens. He played on a national championship junior college football team, but he quit school when the coaches indicated that he wasn't big enough to play professionally. That's exactly, I think, why I'm as good as I am, because I couldn't play football, and I wanted to be the best. And I was good. I was a darn good athlete. But when I got into the car business, I thought, well, this, I can't play. So this is going to replace that. People tell me all the time, they say, you know what, you're crazy. They say, you're crazy. you got no family life. You don't enjoy your money. You don't enjoy your life. What do you do? They want to work a two-to-two -two shift, and they want to spend eight hours a day with their wife and their child and, and this and that. And in a sense, you know what, I am missing out on a few things. I am missing out on my little girl you know, growing up, I, I, you know, I see her every day, but I miss some things, you know, and that's a decision that I made, you know, that's a decision I made and that, you know, I stand by with my wife, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, I keep comparing this stuff to football, but it's like somebody being the Heisman Trophy winner in college, the best athlete in, in the entire country, and he gets a Heisman Trophy winner, and I guarantee you that guy made some sacrifices, didn't he? It's closing another sale when Al's sacrifices and discipline turn into joy. He calls it his high, overcoming every objection from a tough customer and making a sale no matter the size of his commission. And tell you that it was going to cost you $14,400. I want to have you as a customer. White Bear Lincoln Mercury wants to have you as a customer. Well, I went down there and talked to them, and I didn't write anything up. He went to the manager. And he I want to get them, and, and I want to close them. That's the difference between a salesman selling 15 cars a month and somebody selling 40 or 50 month after month. Maybe if you just give me one of your cards, I can go home and check with my wife, bring her back, see if she likes the car, and then we can go from there. Let me ask you a question. The other dealers you've been to, you've had your wife with you. Have they had the car that you've wanted, the two-tone black and gray? Not the black and gray. They had another two-tone that was nice. So this really is the color that you like, am she, I right? She likes the black and gray. She likes the black and gray. Yeah, I think she'd like that. One of the most important things in being a successful car salesman is having a good attitude and momentum. Okay? You've got to have a good attitude to present yourself right and project yourself right. Momentum is the key thing if you're going to sell a lot of automobiles. For example, a lot of salesmen have an opportunity to sell a car, say a Lincoln, for $1,500 commission. Or you could sell a Topaz for a $50 commission. I would rather sell 10 Topaz for $50 commission than sell one Lincoln for $1,500. And the reason being is, is I'm going to sell 10 cars in a span of, say, a week. I'm going to have some momentum. Whereas I'm going to sell one Lincoln, maybe that's the only car I sell all week, I may make more money, but I don't have any momentum. The most important thing in sales and being successful is having momentum. I'll work just as hard for $50 as I will for $1,500.